everyone out there. Thanks for joining us once again. My name is Dr. Ogenekere Ugidiben, and you're tuned into Lifeline, reaching you from the Lagos Network Center of the Nigerian Television Authority. Today, we will be considering a topic that is very important to each and every one of us. I am talking about the skin. People are quite particular about their skin when they have skin conditions, especially on the face and other parts of the body that are exposed uh, for other people to see, you find people not wanting to leave their houses. Now, Nigeria, uh, the Nigerian healthcare situation is at a point where a lot of change uh, is being demanded, both by uh, medical workers and uh, citizens, as it were. Can people get actual proper skin care in Nigeria? So we will be considering what it means to say proper skin care here in Nigeria. And joining me in the studio uh, to do justice to this all important topic uh, is someone who should know about it. She is a consultant physician dermatologist with the Department of Medicine at the Lagos State University College of Medicine. I'm talking of no other than Dr. Frances Fumi Ajase. You're welcome to the program, Dr. Ajase. Thank you. Well, we're talking about proper skin care in Nigeria. And before we started, I had uh, mentioned the term in simple, uh, plain language, skin care. And you said that was, uh, that would be referring to beautification specialists as against dermatologists. So when we talk about proper skin care in Nigeria, what are we referring to actually, ma? Mm. Well, when we, when we talk about proper skin care, we're referring to how do you maintain your skin in good condition without damaging your skin. Because the problem right now is a lot of people in, you know, engage all kinds of cosmetics and chemicals in, you know, to care for their skin and in the process actually achieve damage to their skin. Mm. So we, maybe you're concerned, what should they do then instead of using all these things that damage their skin? Okay, so for, for skin to be in good condition, the first thing you want to ensure is a good diet. Okay. Because the skin is the mirror of your whole body system. It is not possible for you to wear a healthy skin on a diseased body. And the first thing you want to be sure of is that you drink plenty of water because water is actually what makes the skin to look so supple and dewy. Okay. So you want to drink a lot of water, especially in Africa, in Nigeria, where the weather is so hot and um, the sun is actually drying the skin. So you start with good diet, good variety of vegetables, because the skin, you, you see the skin is a growing organ. The skin you're wearing today is not the skin you wore last month. Okay. The skin is constantly renewing itself. And to renew itself, it requires nutrients. So the nutrients you are taking in every day are what will be nourishing your skin and giving you good skin. So you have to know what to eat, first and foremost. Now, after diet, the next thing is cleansing. What do you cleanse your skin with? A lot of people think that they should use medicated soap, they should use bleaching soap, they should, you don't need to. You see, because the skin has what we call an acid mantle. The acid mantle is what protects your skin from the prevalent bacteria in the environment. Okay. And when you use a cleanser that disrupts your acid mantle, you are effectively reducing the natural protection of the skin. So the cleansing agent you, you should use for your skin must be the one that maintains your acid mantle. And this type of cleansing agents we call pH balanced cleansers. 
So anytime you go on the shelf and you see pH balanced on the cleanser, that is the right thing to use. Soaps are by nature alkaline. All soaps by nature, all soaps are alkaline. Okay. And the skin is supposed to be acid. So when you use alkaline soaps on your skin, you are in effectively reducing your skin's capability to to protect itself. Okay. So we recommend that people should use pH balanced um, cleanser or oil in water. Ordinary oil in water, a mixture of coconut oil and clean water, will clean your face very well. And um, avoid, certainly avoid medicated soap because they are irritants. So after cleansing, you now want to think about moisturizing, especially when the weather is dry. And especially nowadays that we all live in air-conditioned environments, air-conditioned cars, air-conditioned homes, air-conditioned offices. Air conditioning dries the skin. And therefore, you must think about moisturizing. And again, the right moisturizer to use will be the moisturizer that is also pH balanced. Okay. Not alkaline moisturizers. So you have to understand what you're putting on your skin. And um, if you do that, your skin will maintain its natural protective mechanism. The, the skin is endowed with natural protection and it will ward off all kinds of things if you do not interfere with the ability of the skin to protect itself. Now the next thing is the environment. What the environment does to the skin. I've mentioned about air conditioning that dry. Then the sun is the next major environmental hazard to the, on skin. To the skin. And the one must, as much as possible, avoid the sun. But there is a paradox here because you need the sun to produce vitamin D to keep the skin healthy. But you don't need too much sun that will now damage the skin. Whereas you need some sunshine for vitamin D synthesis, which is beneficial to the skin, you do not want to stay too long in the sun to, for the skin to damage the, the, the skin. skin itself. So you have to be aware of this. The morning sun, the early morning sun is perfect. But by midday, the sun becomes fierce and is not advisable to be in the sun. And our, our old people know that. And that's why they coined the term mad dogs and English men, you know, stay out in the midday sun. Mm. So they know that the midday sun is dangerous, and it is dangerous. Okay, Dr. Joseph, we would come back to environmental uh, effects. If I get you clearly, as well as the viewers out there, you have rightly said the skin is an organ of its own and mm. it needs to be nourished and that such nourishment will start from uh, drinking a lot of water uh, very wonderful diets you know especially vegetables uh, are very good for the skin now people need to cleanse their skin with the actual the right agent mm. and for those who have money enough to be able to look over the shelves of um, supermarkets to buy cleansers then they should look uh, for pH balance uh, cleansers, and after that, the skin also must be moisturized. But coming to the area of actual diseases, which is where uh, dermatologists, especially you, the consultant, differ from ordinary skin care uh, practitioners. I know that uh, a, a particular disease has been shown on air, and the viewers have been seeing that that disease where uh, the skin just loses its color is actually called vitiligo uh, as we see on the screen there but before we come to a condition like this what are some of the common diseases skin conditions that you see in your clinic here in nigeria the common skin condition we see here as well as all over the world is acne vulgaris which we call pimples yes it is the commonest uh, skin condition because it starts in you know 80 percent of persons by teenage yes and uh, every, most teenagers would have one or, one or two pimples, you know, before they 
they outgrowth. So pimples are the commonest skin condition. And uh, next to pimples is the condition we call eczema. And let me, let me uh, sound a note of caution here. Because eczema has a, a misnomer. Yeah. Some people, what majority of people call eczema, uh, that is uh, what we call ifo, you know, this, um, yoga. yes, is not eczema. All right, that is not the correct terminology for that condition. Eczema is a constitutional condition which occurs in childhood, in in teenage and adulthood. And um, it's usually triggered by some environmental agents, like, again, like the kind of soap you use, the kind of diet you use, the, and other environmental uh, conditions like the humidity, you know, can trigger eczema. You're talking about eczema in terms of dermatitis now? Yes. Or yes. vesicolas? No, I'm talking about dermatitis. Okay. Eczema and dermatitis they are both the same depending on which side of the atlantic you are okay if you are in the american side of the atlantic you call it dermatitis if you are in the european side of the atlantic you yeah, call it eczema. eczema so it's the same and um, is the common is the, in the next to um, acne vulgaris is the next commonest skin condition okay but the skin condition that is most devastating in the black skin are the pigmenting skin conditions. Either the skin conditions that increase the pigment or the skin conditions that remove the pigments. Okay. So those are the major skin problems that bother the African more than any other thing because Nobody likes to have patchy discoloration on their skin. Like we saw on the screen yes. a short while ago. Right. And, uh, and when I told you that acne vulgaris is the commonest skin condition, acne vulgaris has the side effect in black skin to cause black spots. You would have seen a lot of children, you know, teenagers with black spots on their faces, consequently consequent upon acne vulgaris. And it is these black spots which the acne vulgaris leaves on the face that in the majority of cases cause these girls to look for bleaching creams. Okay. All right. No because, yes. Sense. So because of this patchy discoloration, they now want to remove these black spots with bleaching creams. And when they now start to apply these bleaching creams to the face, the face becomes lighter than the neck. And somebody says, oh, look at that one. Fanta face. Coca-Cola. 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 Fanta face. Coca-Cola neck. Or Coca-Cola body. And then he says, hey, if you call me Coca-Cola body, then let me go and remove everything so that I am Fanta all over. And then they start to use... Um, um, bleaching creams. And so the, the, the trick here now is to make sure that acne vulgaris, which we call pimples, is so properly treated that we prevent these black spots that will now cause girls to be looking for bleaching cream. Well, talking about uh, pimples or acne vulgaris, uh, as we scientifically call it, mm. uh, I, for one, had such an experience uh, in my teenage, mm. such that I even reached out for soda. <laughs> because at that time, between 14, 15, 16, we, hear, we heard a lot of things. Mm. I was applying soda on my face such that my face got burnt at a uh, <laughs> warm period. So. Mm. And then it's, I know viewers out there are wondering, do people actually come to the clinic because of pimples? They are wondering, what is the treatment of choice in this environment? Yes, um, a lot of people come to the clinic because of pimples. Because the pimples can be, can range from mild, maybe one or two spots, mm -hmm. to really very scary face. This, this, the face may become scarred. They, you may, they may have large balls on their face and um, 
you know, it may be really unsightly. Yes, I've seen Especially research. in boys. You know, some boys can have very bad cystic acne. So we see a lot of, a lot, in fact, majority of our consultations are based on pimples, you know, okay. that have either been badly treated and like your own, you know, got a burnt face mm -hmm. or they just can't, um, you know, come to terms with it and want something desperately done. So we see quite a lot of um, pimples. And the management of pimples is not something that we can discuss here because it is tailored to the individual. Okay. There are several causes. It may just be simple adolescent uh, pimples that will pass. But it may be that there are actually some hormonal abnormalities underneath that is responsible for this problem you need to find out what it is and tailor the the solution to the problem so there is no one treatment for mm -hmm. pimples it depends on the cause okay well viewers and friends out there if you've been trying to listen to dr jose to get a treatment for pimples like you heard her rightly there's no one treatment once you notice that it is getting out of hand you in fact have to present to an appropriate um, health care provider, especially the dermatologist, the skin specialist, who should um, be able to listen to how it all started and then uh, get you the right solutions to those uh, pimples that are causing you a nightmare. Now, Ma, coming to um, pigmentation and depigmentation, but uh, I would like to start from bleaching. It's quite a topical. Uh, issue a lot of parents want to make sure that their daughters do not have anything to do with it and these days young men are even getting into the industry of trying to do some skin toning and all of that so is skin toning necessary what are the effects of these bleaching creams on the skin first you have to distinguish between bleaching and skin toning they're not okay. the same okay although people you know, uninformed people use both inter interchangeably, but they, they're not the same. So when you see a toning lotion on the shelf, it is not a bleaching lotion. Excellent. The toning lotion is meant to remove the debris on your skin. You see, like if you take a um, metallic head spirit in mm -hmm. cotton wool and you use to rub your skin, you will see that the cotton wool will turn brown. Yes. You are removing the dead cells on your skin. Like when, when I told you that the skin is a growing organ, every minute the skin is shedding off dead cells and renewing itself. So toning is removing the dead cells on your skin so that your skin can glow. And that is allowed, isn't it? That is allowed. This is good because news for Because you people. do not remove the pigment. Okay. Toning does not remove the pigment. Toning removes dead cells from your skin, from the surface of your skin. Because accumulation of dead cells will cause the skin to look dull. Okay. And when you remove it, your skin can glow because you remove you know, the surface dirt. So toning and bleaching are two different scenarios. Bleaching is actually interfering with the synthesis of melanin in the body. That is, you disrupt the, the pigment producing cell. Mm -hmm. you, that causes that color to yes, actually be that there. produce your natural color. That means you interfere with the pigment producing process. And you can so interfere with the pigment producing process that the, after some time, the pigment cell no longer knows what to do and begins to produce pigment erratically. And you see all kinds of colors coming out. And besides, the uh, uh, melanin pigment is there for a purpose. Is the purpose is to protect us from the damaging effects of the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Mm -hmm. And when you remove this protection, you directly expose your skin to the damaging effects of the ultraviolet rays, which includes rapid aging. That is why albinos 
their skin age fast because, because of the absence of melanin. Because of the absence of melanin. So when you now bleach your skin and you remove this natural protection, you are directly transferring your skin to the albino skin. And therefore, you will find out that people who bleach, they rapidly age in the areas where they bleach. And also, some of the agents that they use for bleaching are toxic. They're dangerous to the kidneys, to the liver, to of the course. To like the brain. containing soaps and all of yes, that. Yes, to the brain. So there are too many things associated with bleaching that it does not make sense. Besides, you know, bleaching is not a permanent thing. If you bleach, after some time, your skin will return to the you know, baseline color. And, um, and that's why it becomes addictive. Okay. Because once they stop bleaching, the, the skin goes back and it starts again. And the skin now goes back to the color and they return to the normal color in patchy manner, very uncomplimentary manner. Mm. So they go back to bleaching again until they damage the skin. And cancer is one of the... Yes, cancer is the ultimate complication of this bleaching practice, as it were, isn't it? Yes. Now, let's talk about uh, vitiligo, mm. uh, which was the picture we had on the screen earlier on. Yeah. It's, from my own personal experience, it causes quite a lot of confusion mm. and devastation. People have tried to sort the cause and solution to this condition uh, in which uh, all of a sudden, one morning, they just wake up and uh, see a white spot for someone who is supposed to be dark skinned. Mm -hmm. And it starts spreading until we get um, what we are seeing, um, viewers are seeing mm -hmm. on, the screen, on the screen right now. What is the cause of this condition? And has science been able to identify a solution? Yes. Um, the uh, vitiligo is when, for some unknown reasons, the pigment cell mm -hmm is being destroyed. It's, it's like some internal bleaching taking place. The pigment cell is being destroyed by a trigger that we are you know, yet to identify. And um, there are a lot of theories about what can cause the, what can suddenly start to destroy your pigment cell. We know that it is associated with diabetes, we know that a lot of people who have vitiligo, somebody in their family has diabetes. We know that some people with vitiligo may at a later date develop diabetes and a lot of other autoimmune diseases like goiter, you know, thyroid problem, like pernicious anemia. But by and large, majority of um, vitiligo have no cause especially the one that occur in children. You know, you know, a lot of children also have vitiligo. Mm -hmm. In which case, it may be transient. Okay. And we find out that when children have vitiligo, it disappears, you know, after a few years. Also, it can disappear on its own. It can disappear. There? You see, like all these autoimmune diseases, it, it, can be, it can be corrected. Once the immune status is rebalanced, all these issues are, you know, autoimmune. Something without reason True. is destroying self. And that is because the immunity has gone wrong. So it, sometimes it can correct itself. Okay, well, Dr. just said, because of time, um, mm -hmm. time is not uh, mm -hmm. always enough, and the skin is such mm -hmm. a broad uh, organ that mm -hmm. we can talk from morning till night. Just to wrap this up, uh, what is the state of uh, dermatology practice here in Nigeria? Do people have to go outside the country to be able to assess proper care? Just around this up. Well, incidentally, next month, middle of July, next month, all the dermatologists in the whole of Africa will be meeting in Abuja okay. to deliberate on this matter. So, you know, we'll be happy to find NC there to cover it. Okay. All the dermatologists in the whole of Africa will meet 15th of July in Abuja. And what is the state of dermatology practice in Nigeria? We are very, very far from the goal, very far. For instance, in this country, there is no regulation about cosmetics. Nobody knows 
or controls what people bring in on the shelves. Nobody controls who buys what, and anybody can go and buy anything. A, a child uh, came to the emergency recently, having injected herself with glutathione mm. in the in the aim to lighten skin. It came with bronchospasm. So you, you, you see, how did this 14-year-old get access to glutathione to the extent that she attempted to inject herself? So there are so many things wrong in this um, in this um, practice. Well, indeed, a lot Thank of you. things are quite wrong, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope that when uh, dermatologists Africa wide sit uh, in Abuja next month, uh, that vital solutions uh, will be reached and uh, uh, information will reach the Ministry of Health uh, to mm -hmm. be able to take uh, appropriate. Uh, uh, um, action. Well, it's, it, it is indeed a pleasure uh, having had you on the program, Dr. Jose. Uh, we hope to have you another time where we can talk about other conditions. People itch for no reason and all of that, but uh, we would have to end it here. I want to thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Viewers okay. and friends out there, I'm, sh I'm sorry we are uh, out of time and this is where we'll have to call it a day on this episode of the program. And sure to have a wonderful week out there. players clash this June at the Copa America Centenarial live on Star Times. Will Sanchez and his Chilean teammates retain the title? Will Messi overcome last year's disappointment? Simply renew your Star Times subscription as low as 1,200 Naira or buy a Star Times decoder to watch all Copa America matches live. Participate in Star Times Copa America, predict and win and stand a chance to win exciting prizes such as cash and recharge cards every day. Just flash 01226 4463 on MTN, Visa phone and Etisalat and 0708070302 on Airtel and Glow to participate. Hurry! Recharge your decoder with just 1,200 Naira and stand a chance to win some of the exciting cash prizes in the Star Times Copa America Predict and Win competition. Terms and conditions apply. Copa America 2016, now is the time. Star Times, enjoy digital life. This is the network service of the NTA.